Hi, this is David Abonic Turtle with an illustration of the Z spread, which is an improvement over the nominal credit spread. I'll show you both first the nominal credit spread and then why the Z spread is an improvement. I'm using actual data as of today, July 26th. I pulled yields for U.S. Treasuries, so I'm going to assume that Treasuries are riskless. It's a separate debate as to whether they really are. And then the plot of that over three years, the plot of those treasuries is illustrated right here in green. I've got six months, one year, one and a half years, out to three years. This is not exactly the same, but it is close enough to what we would call the theoretical spot rate. So these are the rates or zero rates we would use to discount risk-free cash flows. Then I've got an assumption about a risky bond with a face value of 100, a three-year maturity, that's to match our curve, and a 2% semi-annual coupon bond. So that means here are here's the series of future cash flows. It's a 2% semi-annual bond, so that's $2 per year, or a $1 coupon in six months, $1 coupon in one year, and so on, until the end of three years, the final coupon, and return of the face value. And then we have here the typical discount factors, and that is one plus my theoretical zero or spot rate divided by two because we're doing the semi-annual raised to the maturity times two. So the set of discount factors gives us the discount function. As you may know then, these are just multipliers we can use to convert the series of future values into a series of present values. So for example, if I go out here to two years, my $1 multiplied by my discount factor becomes my present value for this cash flow. And then I can sum those. We have a series of six here. The summary is here. And this tells us then the discounted present value or the model price of this bond is $102.98. However, it's using these zero rates or this theoretical spot rate curve. So this is the price if these cash flows are risk-free or riskless. However, this is a risky bond, so the price is the actual market price is going to be lower. I just made up a number here, $98, and so you can see how this this difference here reflects the credit risk of this risky bond. So if the bond here is 98, then the most popular metric is the yield or the yield to maturity. So this is the yield to maturity, but we call it the yield. But just to note, when we say yield, unless we're otherwise specify, we're referring to the yield to maturity. So the yield to maturity is the single rate that we can use to discount all of the cash flows and produce a present value or model price that's equal to the observed market price. So in this case, we can use the rate function. I won't go into the details of that because yield or yield to maturity is iterative. But if we use the rate function on this bond with this price, it tells us then the yield is 2.7%. That's also an internal rate of return. And now I plug that in for all of the years. And then I've also plotted it over here. The yield is a single factor measure, so implicitly it's a flat line. And now if I go back and just test that result, now this time in this row, I discount all of those future cash flows, but not at the theoretical spot rate, but instead of this yield that I've computed. So now if I take each of the cash flows on this bond, discount at the yield, at the same yield, I get this series of present values, and if I sum them, I get the present value or model price of 98 that equals the market price. So that was all a bit circular, but it tells me that the yield of the bond is 2.7%. And so when we hear about a credit spread, oftentimes the reference is really a nominal credit spread, where we're taking the yield on the risky bond, in this case 2.7%, and we're subtracting the yield on the equivalent uh, U.S. Treasury bill or note or bond. So in this case, at three years, it's a 1%. And so we would say at the, three year, uh, the yield here, the, the yield of the bond, risky bond is 2.7. We'd subtract the 1% yield on the Treasury, and we'd get uh, 1.7. 
is the nominal credit spread. However, notice by taking the difference in yields or yields to maturity, it's a single factor. It's not something that applies over the entire, entire curve or yield curve. So this is the motive for the Z spread. So now if I come in and I have an assumption here for the Z spread, unfortunately it's not analytical, it's also iterative. But now I've got here the series of future cash flows on this bond, on this risky bond. And now I do one difference. If I go look at here the, com the com computation of the present value of the cash flow, notice what I've got. I've got, the fut I've got the future cash flow, the coupon, divided by 1 plus. Instead of the spot or zero rate, I've got spot rate plus the Z spread. So I've got these for all points on the curve, they are now all going to be discounted by not just the theoretical spot rate or zero rate, but the spot rate plus the Z spread. And so graphically, you can see with the 1%, what that means is I'm discounting by not just the spot rate, but the spot rate plus the Z spread. So it's an upward parallel shift in this yield curve that I'm using to discount. Now at 1%, if I do that, do my discounting, and I get I get a present value of $100.03. That's not the price of the bond, it's 98. So I need to increase the Z spread. So you can see here, if you look at this blue curve, 1.2 kicks it up more, but my price is not quite right yet. And I if I go up to 1.71, I know that's what it is. I would have to iterate or goal seek. A 1.71 Z spread now, if added to all of the spot or zero rates, produces this parallel yield curve here that now includes the credit risk for the bond. And now if I do that discounting for all these future cash flows, I get a present value or model price of 98 that's equal to the observed market price. And so the Z spread is 1.71% because that's the spread I add to all of the points across the entire spot rate curve to get me a discounted price that's equal to the market price. And so you can see how it's an improvement because the different the nominal credit spread was a difference in single point or implicitly flat lines. The Z spread, however, tells me the compensation that I get as an investor over the entire spot rate curve. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.